YouTubers, Brian Proctor back again with another video, and in today's video, we're going to do something that all artists do eventually in their lives, especially if they have a character, and that's draw their character for a pinup, a poster, or a book cover. So today, I'm going to show you how to do that and make it look eye-popping, pleasing, catching. So there are ways to just to do your character. A lot of people just draw the character and it's boom, that's it. But there are really steps to do that to make um, an okay character pop out or to make a character look better. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover that today, those steps by drawing a character. And I'll show you how to put the elements and so forth into that poster or pinup or book cover that you might be doing. But yes, let me show you some examples. You might have seen these before. But uh, these are some of the pinups that I did for some of my characters. All right, so these are some pictures. I hope you can see this. Yeah, fit this all in. This was a commission piece a while back that I was doing. This guy who had uh, a, a substantial amount of money and um, connections did several videos of him and his friends, and they were it was a, it was like a, a comedy thing. But they all knew kung fu, so he wanted him and his character, his friends, drawn in a comic book. So this was um, one of the pinups I did for him, and this was another one that I did, and all this is, is relevant to what I'm going to say. This you've seen before. This is my clown, my samurai clown um, pinup. This is another one. This is one, probably one of the very first ones that I did of him and some of the other characters. This is another, and I'm just going through these quickly uh, so that you can kind of get an idea of what I'm saying. Uh, this is something, you know, I never finished this guy because this suit's going to be black. This was another one that I'm still working on. I'm just trying to figure out how many more weapons I could put on this guy. And then this was of my character and some of my friends' characters. When we all had a company going together, we each had our own, own books. And uh, I just decided to draw a picture of all our characters together. So, now that we have that out the way, let's get to the steps that it takes to do a good pinup poster or book cover. The first thing you want to do is you know your character. Okay, I don't know your character. You know your character. You have to put your character in a pose, first of all. Now, this is one reason why I'm doing the um, action pose position series for those people who don't really know how to do poses yet or can't figure out poses. So when you first introduce your character or when you first draw your character, this is the first time out, you're introducing that character. So you have to basically have that character say hello to the, uh, the audience. So the best way to do that, and I'm reaching for another one of my things again, is to basically put that character in a front position. Put him in a front position, that way you can see the character. As in you're saying, hello, hello sir, how are you doing? He's saying the same thing to you. And it's best to also do the entire body because this is your first time introducing your character to the world. So it's best to do the entire body. And as I say, these guys are front facing, except for this guy. He's going to turn a little bit. But you can see the entire body. So also, as I was saying, is the position. What position are you going to take? Because a position, not take, what position are you going to draw? Because a position can make or break your character. So, as I reach to try to get more paper, okay, it won't come apart. So, you can do a nice position, strong position for your character, or you can do like a little weak position where your character is just down. You know, now which one would you see as being, uh, you know, noteworthy to actually follow or look at or like so you have to figure out what position now your position determines what type of character you have now you could have a superman type character you can have a detective you can have a anything a a, um, a rodeo star a race car driver uh, uh, some kind of alien beast whatever but you have to pick out what type of pose would best suit that character. So I'm just gonna make one up off the top of my head and I'm going to do a soldier character because I just figured it was just easy to do a soldier character. So as I said, the first thing you wanna do is have your character 
facing you. So, as I always do, and you can't see this because this is a really big piece of paper here. This is like poster board size almost. So, I want to take up not all of the all of the paper, but I want to take up majority of the paper. So, his head is going to be here, and the foot is probably going to be here. Hopefully, leaving a little room at the bottom just in case my foot comes off a little bit. So, he's just going to be a soldier now. Another thing is when you do your pinup or your poster, and I'll just say poster, pinup poster, is balance. So this is your, this is your paper here. So you can have your character over here, but what's going to happen with all this space over here? You can move them over just a little bit, but still you got off balance unless you put some elements over here. But we'll get into that. So in the beginning, it's best to just. Put your character in the middle just to, as I say, just to say, say hello to everybody. So this character here, and I may just speed this all up and then just see what we have. And it would be better if I even had my glasses on. So better. My glasses are a little dirty, but still better. So I'm just going to do a basic pose and as I said this guy's gonna be a soldier maybe um, maybe like a space or, or a futuristic soldier something like that so I'm, I'm doing fast because because I'm doing fast and a lot of times you have to watch the size of your your ovals too because I, I a lot of times I'll do my ovals a little too big and the rest of them comes out a little too big so Let's say yeah, this is just gonna be this is just going to be a regular pose and he's gonna have a nice little gun with him. So it's gonna be futuristic because who doesn't like the future? So his other knee goes right about here. So let's see, is that long? No, that's 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 pretty good. That's pretty good for this size. I don't want to go any further past than that. I don't, go any, I don't want him to go any longer than that. So let's say we put his gun here. He's going to be holding his gun. And the gun is just going to be like a little square thing for now. Maybe down a little bit more. Because this hand has got to come down and hold it. So... And right now I'm just just getting my pose together. So if the the handle's here, so let's say his hand is gonna be right here, and then the wrist is bent, <coughs> and then the arm, which would be a little lower. So this is the shoulder, arm here. So that would be here, this other hand, or other arm. So the hand would be right about here. And draw through. You always draw through your um, picture. Like I drew through the gun so I can get the arm right. And it probably still needs a little bit, a little bit more adjusting. So where is that hand at? This hand goes down by the finger. Hand goes down and is bent and his wrists maybe down a little bit. So now this is my typical pose. Typical pose. This is the standard standard pose that I, I want. Maybe make the gun a little longer, but that's that's later in life. So because this guy is um, not just any ordinary soldier, he's got a little attitude because he can. So what I want to do. As I want to tilt his head to the side, like he's cocky. He's like this cocky soldier because he knows he's the best. So as I say, it takes it. Um, your pose determines a lot. Is your character sexy? Is your character um, angry? You know, is he weak? Is uh, whatever the case may be, you have to find that right pose. To tell a little bit about that character, because when you first see the a poster of your character or a pinup, 
you have no idea what that person is or or does or what what year or or century or whatever um uh your story is set in or your character is in so any little thing that you do helps people to say oh okay uh that person is is you know he's he muscular he's he's powerful um he's a fighter uh by the way he stands or if he's got the clenched fist so little things like that, little key key things, little key elements like that will help tell people how who your character is. Because if this is a book cover and people walk by it, they would not know what's happening in that book or, or anything about it. Like I say, year, uh, the place, the whatever, what's going on in, in the story. But by you having your character in a, a certain pose or striking that pose, then that helps people to see and understand right off the bat. So I'm just adjusting these legs and making them a little smaller. Knee. A little shorter, not smaller, I'm sorry. So maybe the foot would be right here. Because, uh, I mean, your character can be tall, but I don't want them to be, like, long and lanky. So, that's the second step. First step is draw your, your borderline so your character won't come out. From the line because you don't want your foot hanging off the page which I have done a couple times many a times in when I when I started when I started when I started in the beginning slow it down Brian in the beginning many times I had my characters feet off the page because I started drawing detail in the head and trying to get that right then I come down and I come down and I come to the legs and it would go right off the paper because I wasn't trying to draw the body and get the body right first. And that's just something you learn as you go along. And you know your character, correct? So don't try to draw the clothes. Like if I knew exactly what this guy was wearing, I wouldn't start and then draw the this and the patch and so forth. Get your body proportion right first. That way when you put the rest of the stuff on, you won't say, oh my God, that, that arm is wrong and that shoulder is off. And you have to erase all that detail, especially if you ink something and then come back later to find out that it's wrong. A lot of people quit drawing that way because they get so frustrated that stuff is not coming out right because they're, take, they're in a rush. They skip the necessary steps to make a good drawing. So as I said, this is, this is my guy, actually. Uh, maybe I'll lift his head because he's looking down. I want him to kind of like look up like he's really not caring. So I'll bring that chin up a little bit. Not sacrificing that neck. I don't want him to be kind of like looking away, but he's going to be looking. He's still going to be looking at us. But as I say, he's got that attitude because he's just cocky like that. He's just this bad old soldier. All right, so now that you have that, that's your first step. Now let me step back from this and um, make sure this guy's not too tall. And several things you can do is, one, turn your paper upside down. You see it in a different light. His legs are kind of long. Or look at it in the mirror. And since I don't have a mirror, nah, I think it's pretty cool. Let make his arms a little longer. And then pull his hand down a little bit from the gun. Let's say about right here. So yeah, that's the first step. Get your proportions right. Now, because this character is going to wear clothes, I don't need to draw every muscle. I just need to have the cylinders like for the arms and legs in place but it's habit for me to draw certain muscles because then I could tell where what goes where so this part is about right and this part and then the hand the hand is always bent because it is holding that that um, the butt of the gun, and then we do one 
one finger. So and I'll fix this in a wash. As I said, this guy's gonna have clothes on, so we're not really too worried about that. And then this hand's gonna be going back in perspective. So that might be out a little bit more. And then you have your fingers. Now, I don't know what kind of gun I'm going to give the guy, but he's going to be holding it under the thing like that with his cocky attitude. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's let's put his ear here. What is his eye? So his ear is here. And his nose. And the mouth. You could have like the little sneer on his face, or it could be like a little smile, like, yeah, I know who I am. I'm in the house. All right, so my camera is blurring, so let me stop it and restart it again. I don't know why, maybe because I have it on autofocus, and when my hand goes up and down, it tries, even though it's on autofocus or a locked focus where it won't jump up and down, maybe it's slipping a little bit. So let me stop it and hit it again. Okay, let's talk about the elements now that go around your character. Uh, as in, basically, yeah, what is what surrounds him? What is what is your character? Is he, um, or should I say, let's just say, what um, elements will help to define your character or define your story to let people know what this is more about or what your character is more about? So, is your character in space? Is he underwater? Is he um, like in a cave? Is he on a rooftop? Is he in the jungle? That would be your background. These are the elements that surround your character that helps him do that. So if I put like a jungle background around him, then people would know that, oh, this guy, he's military. He could be uh, like a black ops, uh, depending on the suit that I have on him. But they know he's military and some type of jungle fighter or jungle warfare type of thing. So right off the bat, uh, somebody who was into superheroes would see that and say, well, that's not my style. Just like somebody who is into uh, the military stuff, if I have a cape and so, so forth on him, they're like, oh, that's, just, that's not my style. That's a good, bad thing because, one, people can tell right away what your character and your story is about. So you attract those people that, uh, that like that particular, particular genre that you are showing to them. So, but this guy is futuristic. So, being that he's futuristic, or it's going to be a futuristic type fighter, I would put some kind of futuristic um, background around him. Now, what would what it would be? I have no idea. Maybe like some robots or or something down here. Some fighters coming, you know, from this direction. And I will probably end up just drawing this all the way out. Uh, maybe a futuristic city. Put a couple more robots or soldiers or something that we don't know. But we know that this, these things are part of the battle. These robots or these soldiers are part of the battle. He could be fighting them or they could be his men or accomplices. And then maybe, as I say, some kind of futuristic city. It looks like more of a hut, Brian. And then keeping in line with my perspective. So if I say my eye line, let me look at this thing. My eye line was probably about right here, right here. Then you know, like that. So if this was a futuristic kind of um, housing or whatever, some more back here. Futuristic city, more back there, then, then what? Then you know a little better. So this, it helps. It's not as important as the character, but it does help and tell people what this is all about. So we have that. We have a character. We have that. Now, anytime you have a background or the elements that, that's being used, try your best to use reference. The same way if you're going to use um, props, any kind of props, any kind of gun or helmet 
or if he has like a robot dog or whatever, try to find um, perspective to make it look as realistic or as good as you can because that's something you, you show in your poster online or wherever. You want people to stop and say, man, that's just tight. Look at that. You want them to be able to look at everything with your character and him introducing himself right there in the middle. So your eyes are going to be torn from him to maybe this ship back to him, his, maybe the pads on his knee, back to his little robots down here, back up to the city. So your eyes are going to constantly keep moving by you placing these elements uh, around your character to say what it is. I mean, he could be in a swamp and I'll put like the swamp water up to his, his ankles and do some swamp stuff and maybe put like an alligator or something in the back. And then still, you, you focus on the introduction of your character and you know that he's in a swamp for whatever reason and this mystery that is uh, still in your head will keep you thinking about this character or this poster. And if it's a book cover, you say, wow, you know, look at that. Now, I wonder what's going to happen with this guy. There's a big alligator right here, but he looks like he's got attitude and he's not really worried about the alligator. So that may be a selling point to your book or if you're selling posters or just to make people or make a person ask, you know, questions about your character. So all this helps in selling. Now, I've got my notes here. Let's talk a little bit about lighting. All this adds up to your um, character. We're going to talk about lighting, then we're going to talk about shading. So lighting, so let's just do this. Let's say I have some shapes. And... triangle and a cylinder like that so we have these shapes and you determine where your lighting is going to be at or where your light source is going to be at so if he's in a cave if he's underwater if he's in an office building if he is in a, a manhole you have to figure out where your lighting is, where's your light coming from, and how much light is there. So if he's like outside on the beach and there's a sunset or a sunrise, you have to figure that out. So with this, let's just say here's my light source right here, and it's coming in this direction right there. So if you want to do something like this, like that, that's where your light's coming from. So now you know basically everything in the front is going to be lit, and everything in the back it's going to be dark. So let's just do some basics, basic shading. Let's just do this like this, this, like, let's just say like halfway. It's going to be half lit. And then, like I said, it also depends on your um, amount of light. So let's say this, and then this thing right here. Now, one thing about lighting, you want to always follow your contour of whatever you are shading. Now, for if you, let's just say, that's your basic light. That's your basic light and shadow here. Now, if you wanted to do some uh, different, maybe like some hatching or some, uh, I can't think of what, what is, there's certain type of lights like filtered light or diffused light. It's been a while since I even had to, to think about this. So let's just say this right here got a little more light and then it kind of goes dark like right about here. But you still want some light here. This is where like hatching, you can do several, several ways. You do lines like this. And when you do lines, let me do this in ink. Maybe it'll come out better. You have to follow the contour of, or follow the shape of whatever it is you are alighting. Now these, uh, let's see. Because these things, it's running through my head, but it's unplanned of what I'm trying to say. 
if you want to say this is a hard light source right here, you got a hard light and it's just shadow here. Now, if you want to soften that, you can do these lines like this. And then that, that will go into, it's more of like a, this is bright, this is a gray, and this is black. It's just comic book way of saying this thing is going into blackness. Now, I am not a master inker. I wish I was, but I will be one day. But I can only show you what little bit I know. It's better than nobody showing you anything. Somebody not showing you anything or nobody showing you anything. You understand what I just said. Like that. And it's kind of like a diffused light. This is your hard shadow and a diffused shadow. But it has to go in the shape of the the shape, the direction of your the surface. Yeah, that's kind of messed up. But if you want to make it go a little further, I wouldn't one, I wouldn't pull the lines out so far unless I'm going to cross hatch it by doing another direction. Lines in another direction, and then you can kind of make it look more. Can you see that? It's kind of hard. More into shadow. More into shadow. I don't know what I just said, but let me show you to you on this thing right here. So you have your hard shadow. Let me get a better pen. Maybe that would help. You have your hard shadow here, and then you have your diffused. And it has to actually curve around because this is a, a, um, a curved surface. Like that. And then if you wanted to just get a little darker, you just add some more little cross hatching down there. Can you see that? Can you see that? So, same goes with your character. If you want to, are you finished with shadows yet, Brian? I don't know. No. So that's my basic, that's your basic shadow and it's hatching. So if I wanted to do this, because this is round, I would have to make this round as well. Now, because it's gonna be darker at the bottom and lighter at the top, if I pull these lines out far, I would start coming in as I go to the top until they are not seen anymore. So it would be like this. Like that. So see my shadow light was right here. Shadow light? Did you just say shadow light? My shadow starts right there. be more like that and if I wanted to um, take this a little darker before it gets to the to the full black as I said I would just draw some lines like that and I would take them in as well I wouldn't I wouldn't do this like come out and then come all the way out and stay out like that I would do, if, if the surface was like this, coming around, I would do this, coming in, and then I would do, let me say this, coming in as well. Hopefully you saw that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then the rest of it would be black. Now, inking is a practice thing. You have to practice that. And the best way to do that is... When I started learning how to ink, I would take somebody's picture and I would um, just draw it exactly as I, as I saw it. Now, if I, can, if I can find this one thing, let me pause this for a second and see if I can find this one little piece. All right, now this is, I bought this, it was a book, how to ink book. And in this book, it had, I don't know if you can see this, because this is, this is crazy old. It had um, blue line pencil drawings 
of a drawing. And what you were supposed to do was you were supposed to ink over the lines that they gave you. As I said, this is old. This is years old. And I found it. I took it out of the book because I was going to ink it. So I found it. And let me let me take the the um let me take this off real quick. I have it on, as I said, I have it on like kind of an autofocus or autofocus lock so that it won't jump up and down. So give me a second. Okay, so better, a little better. But as, as I say, this is this is like really really faded okay now you can see a little better and the lines they give you the line you know it basically you just same way as a professional inker you're supposed to follow the lines that they had and they have like x's for solid black so i picked one out let me show you a couple of others they have like this one's like manga manga style and um I'll see if I can find the name of the book for those who want to practice inking. As I say, this is very blurred, so a very blurred, very faded, because it's been out for a while. So you see the lines, like the hatching, as I'm saying, like right down in here. So yeah. So anyway, here's one more before I get to it. This is more solid blacks than anything. But you would ink it. You would ink it to see how good you were. So this is the one that I did. I started inking it. Never finished because, as you can see for yourself, it's hard to see the lines now. So I pretty much stopped. Maybe I'll try again and then just see how good I can do as an inker. But. As far as me following the lines, not too shabby, but it was not, this is with a, a, a marker. This is not a, a quill pen or anything like that. So yeah, let's see if it'll focus on it. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, as I say, I'm not a professional inker. Uh, I will, if I can ever just be able to quit my day job and do this just period, I think I'll get there, but yeah. So back to what I was saying. I'll try to find that book if you want to buy it and try your hand at inking. So yeah, that's what I was saying about the cross hatching. So you would know that one thing that the give me a pen. The closer you get to the light, so if I drew this, you could actually have like thin lines or even some broken lines to show that it is. It is close to the light so now in the in the back of course it would be minus let's just say this shadow this wasn't all completely black so a far away from it you would have a thicker line showing that it is further or in shadow so from your broken line to your thick line that's the same thing you could do with your character. So now if you had like a hard, hard, crazy hard light, then you would have, let's just say, if it came down, this shadow would be across here. Let's just, just do this just to, to fake it. This would be your hard shadow without any little hatch lines because this is kind of like if the light was coming up here, and it started to get dark right around here, all the way to a solid black. But if it's just a hard shadow, just like that. So if this thing reached across here, it would still be that hard shadow like that and just straight black. Now, as far as a character, and let, me, let me do something quick, real quick, real quick. Yeah, let's do something quick, real quick. Let's just say this chest. Arms, shoulders, arms, and say the abs. And the belt. Let's just stop it right there. So if I just, just did a quick ink on this. And let me just check. 
chest. Abs are here. Now let's just say, throw that arm in there real quick. Let's just say my light was coming this way. So this is going to be light. And anywhere there is a lump, just like this, there has to be a shadow. Now this thing is is, is clear, but it's jumping up and down. Let's just go for it right now. So a hardcore shadow would be more like, because this is round, you'd have the shadow here and it goes down here. And you'd have to learn how to do the ups and downs of the, the muscles. Like I said, if the muscles were round like this, this would be round and it would go down and it would come out and it would go down. And it would come out, and it would go down, and it would come around like that. That would be the contour of that. So anywhere it, this went down, you would have a shadow. This is turning out to be a light and shade video. Like that. Same thing here. Now because the light is brighter here, then you would get a lot more shade like here, like under the chest, you'd get that. And because his arm is here, you'd get black right there. So it would be like this because of that arm. Now, with the abs, anytime you have something, uh, you can see this, over top of something, you're gonna see that shadow. I have my hand here, put my other hand over here, you'll see part of that shadow. So the same thing with the abs. You have the ab here, you have a little shadow here, 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 and here, here, here. And then since the point comes in here, you'd have a lot of times I'll do a triangle, just a small triangle, nothing major, because the shape goes like this. It comes, it comes out and in and then out and back in. So anywhere there's an in, remember, you're gonna have that shadow here too and here too. But it also depends on the amount of light. Like since the light is coming here, you'd have more shadow here. And because this end is down, you still have shadow. And then you'd have a lot more shadow over this side. But as I say, it all depends on your, your background. If the guy's in a cave and maybe somebody had a flashlight behind him, then you get all that, I guess it's called rim lighting, you get all that light around him and it's dark in the center. But if it was like one source, he was in a mine and then every hundred yards there's a bright light, then you would get this kind of hardcore shadow. Now if you didn't want something that hard, then you would just do, let's say if the muscle came this way, you would just make the line up just a little thicker without having to go deep like the, like that, a, a deep shadow line for it. So if it was just this one, make that line go deep and there's a separation between here, make that line a little thicker. Whereas, and I, I'm reversing it, if this side, the light was coming from this side, I would just make that separation really thin versus this side, just a little thicker so you know more light is hitting that side. So same thing with this, because this goes in, you see that, that darkness here. But you don't want to have so much shadow on the stomach and no shadow anyplace else. So in the beginning, try to use as less shadowing as possible. Where did my brush go? But you always know because the, the chest sticks out, same thing, the hand over the hand, you're going to see just a little shadow under the chest. You're going to see a little bit there because this is the deepest part of the chest here, the lower part. And then it depends on, you know, how you have your muscles, how they go. You don't want to have too much shadow if it's not a lot of light. So now if it's a lot of light, a lot of bright light, then you can do, you just go crazy shadow wise. But you have to remember the contour of your, your, um, your body.
And this is the hardcore, I'm in a mine type of, type of shadow. Maybe leaving some edges, like here, you leave some edges to define where um, something is. And because this is going down, start shadowing down here. This arm will be in shadow over here. And as I said again, it, depending on your scene that you are uh, doing, you would have a deep, uh, deep, um, in the neck, I can't think of what the word is right now. Deep, not deep lacerations, but in the neck. And of course, uh, you have your shadow for your nose, your bottom lip be shadowed. Your eyes could be deep in shadow, like so. And then this part of the face, remembering the uh, contours, that could be in shadow as well. So as I said, it's um, depending on your light, your light source, how much light you're gonna have, and uh, your um, your um, your location. Yeah, enough of that, because I, I as an artist, I'll play on this thing forever. See, I'm playing on it forever, and that's your your breaking up of your light. As I was saying, it has to conform with the shape of the chest and makes it better or not the shape just the shape of the the body so if this was going around we go around like that and it's best to do the point start at a point and get thicker so the point and then get thicker point and get thicker basically it's like this that's why it's Point and get thicker and this is just kind of like overkill but to you don't want to go this way and have the thick going to the thin you want to have the thin going to the thick and I envy those people that can use a brush because I cannot that's why I stick with a pen so yeah enough of that let's get back to the, the character drawing so you got your you got your position, which tells the people what the what kind of person it is. He's sexy or he's sexy. She said he could be sexy too. She's sexy. He's hardcore. He's got an attitude. He's weak. He's he's uh, powerful, almighty. Like um, what is that? Like some of the like the Thanos, Thanos, not just Thanos. Anybody could have like the 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 hand up. Where's the thumb? Thumb goes out here. And the thumb, thumb goes, those thumb goes out, yeah. Like he has a world in his hand. Like that, you know, some position like that means like this guy's just, he's just deadly. Don't mess with this guy. I want to try to ink this, but I'm embarrassed myself because... The hand would be there and the thumb would be behind it. There's a palm. Maybe his finger would be close. I don't know. As I said, I don't want to embarrass myself. And then arm here, the shoulder there. And then that would be your um, center direction line. Yeah, a position like that, you know, would show... Yeah, he's got the world, however the world is, you know, in his hand, and he could be crushing the world. So that's a whole different action pose position in itself. But as I said, it's best to have your character introducing himself. So he would be looking here and more likely looking at the, the, the globe itself, the world itself, with that little smirk, which is not introducing himself. You, If you saw this, you would just say, okay, that's a powerful looking character, but... You know what? What? Um, what's it about? Because he's holding the earth, or a small globe, and he's crushing it. She's like, okay, he wants to dominate the world. So, but this guy, 
you would say, oh, okay, this character, he's looking at me. He's kind of basically introducing himself. You know, I, from the elements, I can see that he likes to be in the dark or he could be mysterious because of the dark. If I had trees back here somehow, like he's in a forest. And then black between the trees. He could be some kind of forest guy. And you have your trees. And you would say, oh, what's this guy doing in the forest? You know, it's, it's kind of like a mystery. It's a mystery to me. Don't start singing, Brian. So, yeah, it, 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 it is, again, depending on your background, depending on your lighting, tells a lot about the story. All right. I'm surprised my ink didn't go through the paper into my poster and mess it up. So, with this point, at this point, I'm going to pause this thing so I can get my head back together because I hadn't planned on doing all that. That's a whole different video that you just got for free. So, yeah, let me pause this and figure out the next step to this because I still want to go, we want to go props. As I, I, I've talked about your props. So, I don't know if I want to make these robots or soldiers and I got to figure out a futuristic city and whatever kind of spaceships I'm going to do and then dress this guy. But I think I'm going to dress him first and then go for the rest. So, I'll be back in a split second to you. It may be a few hours for me, but yeah, I'll be back. All right, and I am back. So, let's start building this guy up. So, you probably know what your character look like already. Look like, looks like already. So, for me, I'm just creating this guy. So, I'm going to start to build him up. And let me stop. Once again, retrieve my glasses. So, as I stated before, if your character if you're, is in a suit or something, then you really don't need the muscles. You just need to know how the muscles are shaped, where the body parts are placed. So we say, like, I can make this guy have bigger shoulders, but I don't need to go ahead and draw the the delts and the biceps and so because that's going to be covered up just as long as they're in the right position to where when you do draw stuff on it uh it fits so i'm going to start building this guy up and i'm not going to worry too much about the weapon for now because i kind of know where it's going to go i don't really know what the weapon's going to look like I'm just going to make something up, maybe look at some reference of some sci-fi stuff and just take bits and pieces away from, from it. So right now, I am just, that's going to be the shape of it. So since this guy is sci-fi, he's going to have like armor. So it's going to be in the, in the future somewhere. So he's going to have the kind of armor on and I'm just kind of making some stuff up for the meantime. Just building it up a little bit at a time and see what I get go from there and I think I'm actually going to speed this up because while I am trying to figure this out it might take a little longer than I would like it to take so yeah I'm just gonna speed it up to save you guys the process because it's just this part is just the drawing part and once I get that, then we'll work with the background and so forth and so on. So, yeah, let's speed it up now.
right, so here is the character. Now we're going to ink this thing. It's going to be a fast ink as well. So let's see what kind of mess we've made. So I put the guy in arm. I just kind of just thought about what I was going to do and just did something to make a nice little weapon, futuristic looking weapon, shotgun weapon, whatever it is. So yeah, put some bolts on them to make it look more like armor instead of just plastic. And um, yeah, geared them up. And uh, let's see what I can do with the expression after I ink it. So, yeah, so the, the first thing I'm just going to lay down the lines is just going to be a basic ink over the lines that uh, I already have. Yeah, focus. And then um, I'll come back later after I get the background in and I'll come back and figure out a light source and I'll start adding, add, adding shading to it. So, but first I want to see what kind of messy lines I have and how I might change them and how it's going to look, how it's going to look, how it's going to look once I have one solid set of lines down. So let's go ahead and get inking. So there's our hero. Now I'm going to add some thick lines, a little line weight to it. I have no idea where the light source is going to come from, but I'm going to just add some thick lines so that when I do do the background, he'll stand out more. So yeah, here we go with that one. Alright, so this is the finished character. Now, um, there are a couple more things I wanted to do to him. I wanted to give him a mask or a helmet, should I say, but there was like, because of his position, there's no place to put the helmet. Unless I put it down where it's in between his legs, but that might be too Spartanish. And uh, I wanted to put a full skull on the mask on on his his, his uh, do rag. So basically, he pulls it down over his face, and then they have the full skull, uh, full skull thing, kind of like Grifter. But um, I started to think too deep into it, and it's just basically a, um, a poster for an example of a poster. So, because of time, I'm, um, I'm going to just go ahead and do a speed drawing on the, the background. And then, at the end of it, I will show you or tell you of anything else or any reasons that I put the particular background down on it. If you know what I'm saying, because my mind is on the few touch-ups that I need to do. So... Alright, other than that, again, this is the full character. 
centered right there so you can see the whole thing. He's looking at you, basically saying, hey, this is me, check me out. And the background is going to tell you a little bit more about him. You know, he's some type of soldier. And, um, yeah, the background will tell you more. So, with that said, let's go ahead and kick this background. So, the next, the next image you see will be the finished product. And then, uh, yeah, we can all go home and eat. All right, let's do it. And boom, here you have the final product. So um, I did a little tweaking on it. Uh, I changed the city around. Uh, well, more like the city's in flames, up, going up in flames. Now, that little bit of a hint could change the whole personality of the character. So you could say to yourself, is this guy the one that started this? Is this the one he attacked the city? And maybe these robots and these other guards are coming out there to stop him because he's got that cocky attitude or you could say to yourself uh, maybe he's the hero and these guys are going out to catch the ones that destroy the city so little tweaks like that can uh change the story so if this was a book cover then right away you would know okay this guy's a soldier he's cocky uh it's in the future um there's a war going on and did he start the war or is he going to stop the war so that alone, that little mystery will keep you thinking about it and maybe make you pick up the book or, or keep you coming back. So, yeah. Now, add a little line weight to um, like the bottom areas of some things and just thicken the whole thing out so that you can see him. He stands out more than the others. I did a little shadow on some of the robots. I didn't want to go do too much because you can do too much and mess up, actually. And it's just been about three days that I've been working on this thing. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of get it up enough to get it out. So yeah, this is the finished product. So I hope that you did learn something. As I said, it took about three days to actually get the whole thing together. And I'm sure I lost some of my train of thought a couple of days ago. There was a lot that I wanted to cover and showing you how to do this. Hopefully I got it all. If not, I'll throw little bits and pieces into my next video referring to this video. So with that said, I'm thinking what I want to say. I always do that at the end of my video. My brain always runs and says, did you miss something? Did you miss something? So because I can't think of it, as I say, hopefully you got all the information that you need so that you can go out and start or uh, do your own poster of your own character using the steps and the techniques that I've told you to do so people can see right off the bat your, your character and know a lot about your character from just that pose, the position, the, the, the background, so forth and so on. So, other than that, or should I say with that said, I'm going to end this video and uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave a comment, tell a friend as I always say. And um, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And if you, if you know somebody who hadn't subscribed, go out and drag him by his hair and make him hit that subscribe button. All right, I'm out. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.